Emily and I had a great weekend antiquing. We bought a big haul of stuff out of a dealer who's really only open on Sundays to people out of his house. Saturday, her dad goes to an auction. He calls us about some photography there. So we go to check it out. And while we were at this auction, Emily runs into a dealer she knows who sells out of his house. Like I said, just on Sunday. So we decided to pop over Sunday and check it out. These are the photographs from the auction we ended up with. Some cool stuff. Uh, primarily the reason we wanted to go is this baseball photo yard long baseball photo yeah pretty cool thing uh two elks teams dated 1914 and a bunch of clowns and band whatnot but the main thing was emily saw this guy talked to him and got his address and we went there sunday about an hour and a half drive let's dive in so here is the overall load 18 objects we bought 18 objects pretty cool stuff a lot of sewer tile as you can see a lot of sewer tile not terribly surprising to find sewer tile in ohio as most of it was made in ohio i made a video recently about sewer tile i do love sewer tile i think it's really interesting this lot had a couple really cool pieces because they were not all the molded ones that you see over and over again but yeah a wide range of kind of a wide range of things but it's mostly sewer tile this was actually our final purchase this is a milking stool but I think it would make a really good shelf. You just hang it like that and you could put small pieces of pottery on top. Neat piece of woodenware. It's got a little bit of a end there. Doesn't look like it was worn down, but maybe it was. Decent form. Another piece of early woodenware. Flax satchel. Yeah, I know people out there are like, oh, no one buys flax satchels. Emily's dad actually likes these and collects them. See, that one's dated 1817. So decent date on it. And it looks like the decoration there, you can see the decoration, looks like a turkey feet. I guess turkey feet and maybe some crosses mixed in um, and a little bit of flax. There you go. I'm gonna come back to the sewer tile. I'll show you this. Acid etched uh, advertising shot glass from Cincinnati. Cincinnati made a lot of a lot of beer back in the day, a lot of brewery. It does have the tiniest little rim flake there, but these are actually pretty popular. That might do pretty good on eBay. Did buy an insulator. I don't know a ton about insulators, but I know enough that sometimes I can tell when it's not the most common ones. This has a little bit of damage, but as you can see right there, it's like an emerald. So this is an emerald prism. Pretty cool, pretty cool insulator. A lot of nice color, not a bad insulator. Slaw cutting board, possibly made in Ohio. Has the heart cut out. What you gotta be careful with these is, sometimes you'll look in here and the cut will look very new. And that means it is new. So this one has good oxidation on the heart. So the heart was likely original. Like you said, you see people take a lot of plain ones and add the heart in more recent times, but that heart looks old. Um, nice early nails. He said he got this collection of these years ago. This is the last one he had. Collection of these from Lancaster. I assumed he meant Ohio. Emily thought he meant Lancaster, Pennsylvania. I don't know. Uh, Ohio might be pronounced differently than the Pennsylvania town. This thing, not the best surface on it. Also has a heart. Got waxed at some point. But it does have the history on the back. Made by my grandfather, Isaiah Wilcox, Kentucky, 1869, corn gritter. So corn gritter with a heart on top. I thought it said corn critter at first, which seemed more interesting, but I do love these. Just a regular piece of pottery that someone cold painted, meaning they painted it after it had already been fired, usually years later, but it's been painted after it was made. The paint has a decent enough surface, or a great surface, decent enough amount left as you can see, some of the flowers are worn down a little bit. He had three or four of these. I love these things. This one had the best paint, so this is the one I bought. A pair of molds. At first, these were on the shelf like this, pushed together. It was kind of dark in this like barn garage. I thought they might have been fungus, painted fungus. Emily and her dad love painted fungus. Emily is eventually probably going to have the biggest collection of painted fungus ever. But no, there's some sort of ceramic molds. I don't know what these were for. Um, 
rubber ducks, rubber rubber swans. I don't know, cool things though. People know me a long time know I am a bottle guy. I bought one bottle, Double Eagle. Off the top of my head, I believe these were made in Pittsburgh. I'm not sure. Um, smooth base example. Very nice looking eagle though. Uh, good color. He had a few bottles, a couple reproductions, a couple European bottles that were later than what I would like for a European bottle to be. But this was the lone sort of early American example. He also had a Hostetter's Bitter, which is common, so I passed on that. This, unfortunately, has had some damage to the, to the, to the top, but still a nice little shelf filler example. Very, very nice uh, color on that. Here we go. Some of the sewer tile. Start with this guy. Seated dog, kind of a common uh, form. Reminds me a little bit of the Cocker Spaniel or the, um, reminds me like a lot of the early English ceramics. They also made dogs. People loved the dog. This was made with a mold. Most sewer tile was made out of a mold. This one, really cool color on the base. Also made out of a mold. Really neat looking thing. Lion doorstop. This might be more sewer tile adjacent. It might be sewer tile. It looks like redware. It's heavy like heavy like marble. Base looks a little bit like marble. A little wear to the face. That might be more sewer tile adjacent. This piece was cool. He's got a lot of size to him. Bigger than average. This piece. This piece is really cool for many reasons. One of which is that it's all handmade. You can see the body of the thing, body of the lion. It's just handmade. It's very crude, very folky. Look at there, you see the feet. Super dirty, this barn was dirty. See the feet, the face, very charming, very folky. It's the size, the size is it's a little bigger than, see it gets a, the color right with my hands in the photo. The size is very big. Got the log, the base, the hand-formed lion. Yeah, that is a cool, cool thing. Very folky, very charming, and big. So yeah, scale's important. Uh, the bigger it is, the better, I think, with a lot of uh, sewer tile because they tend to make smaller pieces, but uh, super tiny pieces would also be collectible and desirable. Here we go, the final three pieces of sewer tile. Uh, this one is cool. This one is also handmade. You can tell the body's not very defined. Really obvious with the ears and the face that this is hand uh, handmade. Has a number on the bottom. I guess came out of a museum collection at some point. Not repaired. You get it in the light and you can tell. Uh, those ears are funky. Funky, funky ears. Had some crackling in the manufacturer, but that's neat. And then this piece, this is made out of a mold. This is funky. When I saw it, like I said, it was kind of dark in there. I thought it was some sort of Frankenstein at first. I thought someone would put a doll's head on top of a sewer tile body. And then I realized, no, I picked it up and got a close look at it in the light because it was back on the, buried on the shelf. That is how that thing was made. That is some sort of white ceramic face. Now this is made in a mold. See the body's formed. It's also signed. I started going through the book. I haven't, uh, there's nothing in the book with this white ceramic faces or white ceramic mixed with sewer tile. You see a lot of like yellowware mixed with sewer tile or yellowware or the whole thing will be yellowware, but that is cool. I'll have to look in the book, see if there's anything else with that same signature. And here we go, the final piece. So the owl is a definite keeper. Emily has a sentimental reason for collecting owls. Um, her mom passed away like the day her mom passed away and Al came and hung out on the porch for like 24 hours without moving which is really obviously if you know anything about owls very rare so she collects owls this is particularly nice because you can see with my thumb I'm pointing the eyes were applied the wings and the body and the head and the wings are all one piece of clay but you can see they cut into there to make the wings look and all the feathers I don't know it's very crude which is very folky, which is has a strong emotional response, which is why I like the folkier ones, the cruder ones, rather than the molded ones. And this is this is just, to me, this is just a really interesting, really beautiful piece, really charming. Don't get me wrong, I really like the molded pieces too, and they are super desirable and super collectible as well. It's not like just the folk art ones are, are more uh, collectible. It varies from collector to collector, of course, but for me, folk art just 
you know, it invokes such a emotional response more than more traditional forms of art. And that's why I like the, I like the crude folky ones. Works as a shelf, really cool shelf, I think. Super thankful for Emily for finding this guy, and knowing this guy, and this is cool, cool stuff. Hey, so that was the load. I think a pretty good day, a pretty good haul, as they say. Um, hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you do, please hit like and subscribe to follow my nomadic antiques journey as Emily and I travel around the country buying and selling antiques, setting up at flea markets, shopping flea markets, and all the rest of the things. Thanks for watching. Peace.